A Senate inquiry has recommended that trials of the cashless debit card be continued and expanded to new sites in other states next year. This is despite Labor and Greens senators providing separate dissenting reports that rejected the recommendation that legislation for the bill should pass. The majority report's proposal dramatically contrasts with most of the submissions accepted by the inquiry raising significant concerns and arguing against the trials. These submissions outline a variety of serious issues that have been largely overlooked. What is the card? The trials for the cashless debit card began in early 2016 in Sejua, South Australia, and the East Kimberley in Western Australia. The card quarantines 80% of social security payments received by all working age people, between the ages of 15 and 64, in the trial sites. It attempts to restrict cash and purchases of alcohol, illegal drugs and gambling products. The card compulsorily includes people receiving disability, parenting, carers, unemployed and youth allowance payments. People on the aged pension, on a veteran's payment or earning a wage are not compulsorily included in the trial, but can volunteer to take part. The issues left unanswered. The trial disproportionately targets Indigenous people, despite the government claiming the card is for both Indigenous and non-Indigenous welfare recipients. This is disingenuous, given the card was first proposed as a key recommendation in mining magnate Andrew Forrest's review of Indigenous training and employment. This recommendation followed various other forms of income management, including a program that was part of the Northern Territory intervention in 2007. The intervention required the suspension of the Racial Discrimination Act to explicitly target all Indigenous people on welfare. Concerns about human rights breaches continue, and most were overlooked by the Human Rights Joint Committee's commentary on the cashless debit card bill. The trial of the card has increased hardship in people's lives. This is not only because of the experiment's disorganized and ill-conceived implementation, but also due to the trial's design. People are being compulsory included because there is an assumption that they engage in problematic behaviors, such as the overconsumption of alcohol gambling, or the use of illegal drugs. But this is not the reality for most people. Being put on the card has made people's lives harder because limiting cash restricts people's ability to undertake day-to-day -day activities to help their family's well-being. This includes getting second-hand goods, paying for transport, and buying gifts. This hardship is reflected in the final evaluation of the trial, in which 32% said their lives were worse since being on the card. Only 23% said their lives were better. Further, 48% of participants reported that the card does not help them look after their children better. This is concerning, as recently completed research into income management programs indicates a correlation with negative impacts on children, including a reduction in birth weight and school attendance. Getting the assumptions wrong has pushed already vulnerable people into even more vulnerable situations.